Hey everybody, uh, another session of cooking with Jean. I have gotten a bee in my bonnet and I really, 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 really want pasties. Now, what is a pasty, you might ask. Well, pasties are meat pies. Um, the ones I'm familiar with are Cornish pasties, which were brought over from Cornwall to California by the miners who were up in the Sierra Nevadas who were mining for gold. And so I grew up with them because uh, they were a, uh, basically a staple treat uh, around where my dad was raised. And they are totally yummy. So I am going to make some. So let us get in here. Okay. So now this is not an exact recipe though there are exact recipes out there uh, but we're going to start with one two and I'm not really measuring three uh, let's see go with I want to make sure I have plenty of dough four and a little more okay so there's the flour and we're going to mix in some salt. Yeah, that should do. And then I'm just going to... Okay, these things are very handy. It's a pastry blender. And it's very good for mixing this in. So the next thing we're going to add is shortening. Now, traditionally, they used lard, but I do not have any, so I'm just gonna plop in uh, about that much. Let's see how it goes, and we're gonna cut that in. Now, you can use forks. Uh, some people use two knives, and they kind of go like that. Uh, you can use your hands. I kind of like to use the pastry blender. You can also use your food processor. But the last time I tried blending using my food processor, <laughs> I wound up with uh, creamed flour and shortening. Now there are some recipes out there that use chilled butter. And I don't know why they call it an original pasty since a lot of people did not have butter. But what we're looking for is nice crumbles. It doesn't have to be perfectly blended in. And I think I'm going to add just a little bit more. One of these days I'm going to try and make it the way my grandmother did with flard. But I just haven't wanted to buy any if I don't have a lot to use it with. But that might be something a little down the line. Just get a block and start experimenting. Especially with some more authentic recipes that require the use of it. Because as I've stated before, the fat in a lot of cases, is where the flavor is. Oh yeah, that's looking good. You can see it's nice and crumbly. Okay. So, now we're going to use water. Now, you need very, very cold water, so what I've done is I have Put cold water in with ice, and you want to get it a little bit at a time, not a lot. Now you're going to get one hand, it's going to be your mixing hand. So because what we're making here is a nice dough. And I'm making a mess. But you know what, if 
you don't make a mess in the kitchen, you're not doing it right. So yeah. So just keep mixing. Oh yeah. Now pretty soon what you're going to get is it's going to start Okay, yeah. Got the right amount of salt. Don't be afraid to use salt. Salt enhances flavors. But I wouldn't advise just going overboard with it. Add a little bit at a time when you're using salt to what tastes good to you. Now, if you've been eating a lot of over-processed foods, um, a lot of them have a lot, so when you start learning to cook things from fresh, from scratch, you're going to need to retrain your taste buds. So, oh yeah. Oops, we don't need ice in there. Now you can sprinkle this in a, using Okay, yeah, we're getting there for... Okay. Now, if you add too much water, just add some more flour in. It's a nice thing. Oh, yes. That is coming along nicely. Eventually, I'm going to have to get in there with both hands. Because what we're doing here is going to be kind of like a pie dough. Do you want a little bit? Okay, a little more water. Okay, now time for both hands. Okay, yes, the consistency is getting there. Basically what you want, it's kind of a nice little stretchy dough. Still a little dry. One of all. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay now that we've got our dough ball. Press it all together. Now you can either use wax paper or plastic wrap. I'm just going to put it in the egg. Get some of the extra in. And I'll push it a bit. 
what we're going to do is we're going to let the dough rest and let the flour continue to absorb all that moisture we put in. So we'll let that do about a half hour. We are going, going to start chopping things up. We're going to start with the potatoes. Now potatoes are a great way to stretch out recipes. So just cut out any bad spots. So that'll go out to the composter in a little while, along with the peelings. So what we're gonna do is cube them. So cut. Always want to have a flat side. So what I like to do, especially these big ones, is cut them into thirds. And I also like using these flexible cutting mats. And then from the dollar store, I get these uh, non-skid um, placemats, I guess you could call them. They're really nice because they keep things from slipping. So I'm just going to go ahead and dice these. So, nice chunks. Don't have to worry about total size. Though if you got really tall, you may want to slice them a third of the way again. So let's so that's it. This is why I like the uh, flexible mats. Right in the end. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And as I mentioned, if you have a really tall, you can go ahead and slice it one more time. So let's go ahead and do this in thirds again. Always make sure you have a nice sharp knife. We have a guy up the road who we pay to sharpen our knives, so it's always worth getting them professionally done. Though in the meantime, we uh, will do touch-ups on our own. Another reason why I like this mat, it gives me something squishy to go underneath the knife so the knife doesn't get hit on something hard. Okay, we've got our first bit. So I'm going to trade that out, bring this over, I'm going to cut meat. And I'm going to use a different type of knife. It's an ulu. It is an Alaskan native knife. It's really good for cutting. And I happen to love it. I'm getting meat out of the fridge. I need is the big one. So actually, I'm going to mix everything together. So. Okay. Now oh, this is a chuck beef chuck. Now, as I've said before, you want something with some fat in it. So, so I'm going to need this one. So, I'm going to do 
do is basically cut it up into little bite-sized pieces. Now you, at this point you can leave out some of the bigger chunks of the fat so we don't want it to be too See what I mean about the pad? Nothing's moving. Now you can do this with kitchen shears. I love my kitchen shears. They come in so handy, especially when cutting up a raw chicken. And it does make it a little easier to get even sizes. I'm going to cut some of this excess. There we go. Now, whatever you are, don't be afraid of handling raw meat. If you're really squidgy about it, go by your local deli where they have do meats and stuff and see if they'll sell you a box of non-latex food handling food grade safe gloves. I do use them occasionally because I find when I'm handling super super cold raw chicken because I do like to buy the big 10 pound bags of chicken hindquarters when Winco has them on sale and I process those down so I don't need to have a whole big 10 pound bag uh, frozen in my freezer and what I do is since hubby does have to watch how much fat he eats I have to pull the skin off, but the one nice thing about that is the skin becomes Cook's portion. <laughs> so I like to make cracklin with chicken skin. Oh, it is yummy. Okay, almost done here. goes in. So, do that. Set that off to one side and I gotta okay, go, here we onions. go, the onions. Um, I think I've mentioned previously about buying onions and then stashing them in the freezer after I slice them. Make this at night and convenient. So, I think I've got the last of my onions that one. So, so yes, they're a little frozen. It's not going to hurt them. Uh, you won't be able to use them like you would use fresh onions, so if there's any applications that require a fresh onion, you'll need to get fresh onion. These are perfect for using in recipes that the onion is going to get 
put down anyway. So you can't do these and then expect to make onion rings out of them. Okay. One of the reasons why I do this is um, I can't eat regular onions. They absolutely hate me. I could get away with a small amount, but I happen to like a lot of recipes that have a bit of onion in it. So, when Walla Walla sweets come on sale, I buy lots. And what I don't freeze, I like to dry. So, okay. Now, we're coming to our seasoning. Now, seasoning is really, really simple on this. It's basically salt and pepper. Okay, pepper. Fresh ground if you can. And some salt. Oh, let's see, I think I want to use this. And just mix it all together. Like I said, you can use your hand, but right now the hands are reasonably clean. I need to handle some other stuff. Now, I am not so terribly anal on stuff that I will wig out if I happen to get a little meat juice on my hands. But a little bit of caution goes a long way. Like, a lot of people would absolutely have a screaming hissy fit if you took this and had a bite, which I will. I happen to like raw beef. <laughs> okay, well, I got the pepper just perfect. That'll do. Okay, so we have our fillings. So now, just have to wait for the dough to finish. And then off we go. Okay, it is now time to assemble the pasties. So, we have our work surface here. This used to be the top of a freestanding dishwasher. When the dishwasher died, I happened to still like the cutting board that top. So we took it, I sanded the heck out of it, as you can see it's kind of splitting, and then oiled it down with uh, food grade mineral oil. So what we're going to do here to make the pasties, it's going to a little bit of flour down. Take some of the dough and roll it out. Flour. Now, rolling pins are all a matter of preference. I happen to like this one. It belonged to one of my grandmothers. So. Okay. So, try and get it. as big as possible. I'm going to take some of this mixture. Get 
nice bit of meat. And then fold over. And we're going to make a little pie. Tap that down. And then trim. Simply seal it shut, poke a couple holes so the steam can escape because otherwise you'll wind up exploding. And then onto a baking sheet, just like that. So, I will finish making more, and then we'll see what about, about putting them into the oven. Pasty. Out of this recipe, I managed to get nine. My dad used to make a lot more, but then he, of course, really went into the pasty making. So, that's a little bit more meat. So. So sometimes you will have to stretch the dough a little bit, just to, and don't worry if they don't look perfect, they'll just look real. Another trick, if you have to cough, put it in the side of the kitchen. Do not, whatever you do, cough on your food. For one, it's gross. So, so there we have two trays of pasties. And I put them on already greased sheets. Okay, now we still have a little bit of dough left over. Let's see if we can get 10. So. And don't worry if you have dough left over. One of the treats we usually had with a lot of leftover dough is you take them and make little flats And sprinkle them with cinnamon and sugar and pop those into the oven to bake. As I've been going, I've been really adding in all the dough that has been cut off. So you don't want to waste perfectly good test you know. I think I just might be able to make 10, which is good. Okay, this one's going to be a fun one to do. Let's see if we can get this nice and flat, a lot thinner. Now, my uh, rolling skills are not the greatest, because I stopped baking quite a while ago. And there we go. Turn that just a little bit. Like I said, this doesn't have to be pretty. Let's see how much we can stuff in there. Oh, I think we can get a bit in. We'll have to get creative in the folding. So, I guess I just stretch to fit. And guess what? 
we managed to get 10 pasties. Now they don't have to be very big pasties. We also hang on to your tools. So we still have a little bit left over. Oh well. Okay. So let us finish this one. have achieved fastage. So we have leftover filling. So I'm just going to pop it into a bowl cooking. Now if you're really into doing some serious cooking today or after you make it or even tomorrow this will be a good start for a stew. All you do is add to it. So, what I'm going to do, just take this last little bit. Not much left. make a little cap for the meat and potatoes. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to toss it in to the oven and everything's done. And this will get us a little meat. Something. take that kind of just lay it across the top. If you had it big enough, you can make a very stretch it a little bit. Yeah, have a single crust little pot pie. So I'm just gonna put that in the fridge in a bit. Alrighty, so we've got our, at this point, it's a good time to kind of straighten up. One good tip for when learning to cook, try and clean as you go. I'm going to... and set my oven to 350 and word of advice always remember to get the cast iron skillet out of the oven before you use the preheat set that up the rack and we'll wait till the preheating done. and uh, Pop everything in. Set in. Okay. Problem being is my oven is not quite yeah, big enough. So I've got to get creative. So. Pie tin. In the oven. So set for forty five minutes. 
now let's give it 35. And see what we get when it beeps. Are out of the oven. Um, you bake them till kind of golden brown around the edges. You will probably have a little bit of leakage, but don't worry about it. Just kind of let them cool. But I have a great need. Two. Want to test? So. Okay, these are going to be rocket hot inside, so be very, very careful. I'm just going to kind of cut one open a bit. Oh yes. So. See, it's nice and cooked inside. Just. Mm. To run this for a lot better. So, like I said, here we have pasty. Now, the one nice thing about pasties is you can put whatever you want in them. No, it won't be a pasty. It will be a meat pie. Or you can stuff them with vegetarian friendly ingredients. I bet you you can even come up with a vegan friendly uh, version. Um, if you're really good at making doughs with uh, gluten free flours, I'm sure you can come up with that too. So, to reiterate, what we have here is a Cornish pasty, a meat pie. Um, just plain simple version. Uh, you can even use uh, a mixture of potatoes and like parsnips. Parsnips are really good. Uh, rutabagas, well, rutabagas are pretty good too. Um, I generally like them with just the potato. So there we have it. Pasties. I am going to now go enjoy my lunch. Finally, it's been driving me nuts. Let's smelling the wonderful smell coming out of the uh, kitchen. Uh, you can uh, dip them in a little bit of steak sauce, HP sauce, ketchup. I like them plain. So, see you later. Bye bye.